Hey, this is Zach Werchak from Elephant Gun Riot, and you are listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Your source for all hard rock, heavy metal, new metal, alternative, punk, horror punk, hardcore, rock, and all local bands with your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bod Father. And as always, I bring you guys awesome interviews. Today it is an honor and privilege to have Mr. Zach Warchak. He is the guitarist of Elephant Gun Riot. They have a new EP called Sirens Call. It's out right now. It's been out for quite some time. So we're going to be talking to him about that. And plus what Elephant Gun Riot has plans for for the remainder of 2018, things like that. So, Zach, how's it going? Good. How are you doing, man? Doing awesome. Doing awesome. Glad to have you on the show. Let's let's Thank jump you. right into this. So, you guys had your debut album, then an acoustic EP, which I congratulate you guys on the acoustic EP because lots of bands shy away from that. Yeah. But uh, now you have another EP that's out right now. Do you guys like the EP route instead of going a full length? Or let's let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so our first ever release of music was actually a three song, almost a, I don't call it a demo because it was, you know, high quality. It's on our Spotify. We did three songs because we just wanted to get something out because we started playing shows and everybody's asking, hey, you know, where's where's the music? Where can we hear it? Where can we find it? Where can we buy it? So we had to get something done. So we kind of just took the three songs that we had down pretty pat and went to the studio, record them, put them out. From there, we did uh, our full length, which was nine songs. And that went really well. It took a long time due to scheduling issues in the studio, things like that. But after that, I think kind of the lo- how long it took to get the full length done, we wanted to kind of speed up the process with EPs and kind of just turn and burn new music. Because, you know, when, when I write a riff, by the time someone hears it on a full length, it's been about a year and a half, two years that I've been playing it. I'm sick of it. I want to move on from it. Where with EPs, it's... You can kind of, this is what I'm thinking now in the moment. This is this is us as a band right now, not two years ago. And I think that's where EPs and singles right now are my personal favorite way to go and the way to, you know, consume music. So, Yeah, and folks don't understand that. Like, you guys sit on these songs for a very long time. And, and yeah. you know, people think like, oh, they just came out with this not long ago. No, folks, this has been in their tool for a very long time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll look back because when I start working on songs and demoing them out, I just give them the name EGR, you know, two dash four dash whatever, you know. And so I can go back and look at the actual day that I started working on a song, tracking it. And I mean, there's somewhere I'm blown away. I'm like, that was 2014 that we released that like two and a half years later. It's just kind of weird. So the idea of EPs to me, you know, keeps me excited about the music because, you know, once the music comes out, that's when you really have to kind of be in love with it and push it and promote it and you know, make convince everyone else that you love this music instead of something you've been playing for years and years, hundreds and hundreds of times. So mm-hmm. that's why I like the the EP. What's impressed you the most about the EP Sirens Call? What's caught your eye about, if anything, Zach? That's a good question. I would say maybe how much <laughs> it sounds weird, but maybe how much people are enjoying it. Because usually we'll write music to something that we like, we enjoy playing. And this going from the full length to this one for our full loud sound. The full length, you can kind of tell we were figuring out what the heck we were, what we wanted to sound like. And this first one, the first these, this Sirens Call EP, these five songs, I feel like is a pretty dang good representation of what we are as a band. So I think now it's kind of saying, oh, okay, this is who we are. And seeing that people go, oh, excellent. We really like it. We want to listen. We want to buy. We want to bring you to our town. We want to do all these things. So I think that's kind of what surprised me the most is like it's, it's working and people really like it. When in my head, I'm like... Are we? Are is this who we are now? Okay, this is us. Oh, and people like it. Excellent. How long did it take you guys to record this EP? <laughs> so, like I said, our full length took us, I would say, somewhere between a year and a half to two years. Uh, and that was just because of scheduling issues. Our engineer was on tour with bands going across the world. But this one, we pre-produced everything ourselves. We're ready to go. I would say, oh man, maybe a month. I think only about five or six studio sessions total. And those were only like four hour studio sessions. This EP was recorded at Rainbow Trout Studios in Spokane, Washington with Bill Nyman, engineer and mixing. Oh, yeah. So who actually produced this album for you guys? So yeah, a uh, Rainbow Trout Studio, Bill Neiman, and he loves Spinal Tap, so he went with Rainbow Trout. 
um, <laughs> he uh, he's a good friend of ours. So he um, he engineered it. Uh, he he's I love working with him because a he's a good friend and b we self produce everything. Mm. But when we're in the studio with him, if you're playing something and it sounds silly or dumb to us, it sounds cool. Like check out this riff. And it just doesn't fit the song. He'll kind of do this turn. And he'll look at you, and right away you know, oh man, that's dumb, isn't it? <laughs> and so he gets some of the producing credit in that sense, where he has no problem pulling that red flag, saying, "Don't do that. Figure something else out. Trust yeah. me." Does he, and uh, I like it. Does he push you guys really hard sometimes? In certain ways, yes. I mean, I think he pushes us to write good songs and pushes us to realize that you're always, you can always be better. You're not the best you're ever going to be until you're done, you know. So always keep pushing, always keep working hard. Never settle for what you're, what you think you have. You know, oh, this song is great the way it is, but that might be demoitis, which you've heard it that way a million times when you pre-pro it. Then you go into the studio and record it. Then it's not as good, or maybe you make these couple tweaks and now it's better. So I think he does a really good job of making us open our eyes, and I think that's kind of the biggest plus of working with him is just, is this the best it can be? And if not, what can we change to make it just a little bit better? Yeah, and plus it's good to work with a familiar face who, who that you worked with before too. Oh yeah, and like I say, I mean, him and I are, we're really good friends, and it's fun going there because I'll show up with a bag of burgers, and I know exactly what he likes, and we'll you know have some beers, <laughs> and we have no problem just harassing each other. You know, Caitlin, our singer, she'll be in recording tracks, and him and I'll be joking about something kind of totally differently, and she thinks we're talking about him, and I'm like, no, we're actually or her, and I'm like, no, we're actually laughing about this other guy we went golfing with, and he did this and that, and. So yeah, there's a definitely a comfort level there that uh, I think makes it so much easier. And that's another reason I believe that it's nice because we go in there for three, four hours max. We never do more than that because our ears start getting tired. And I think you kind of start just putting tracks down and, you know, takes that just because, okay, that's good enough to go. But maybe it misses the humanity of it. and It doesn't sound as good as it could. So with him, it's kind of nice having those small blocks because we're friends Instead of like, okay, we got to go into the studio and book out 10 hours this day and we're going to work to the bone and lay down all the drums. And, you know, it gets kind of seems crazy. Where with him, it's like, hey, I'm feeling really good today. Let's get together and track. Oh, hey, you know, vocal wise, she's feeling really good. Let's get together and track and ha- do it for three hours. So it's not a whole day and we can kind of enjoy our time together instead of getting sick of each other. Any songs off the EP that stand out more to you on it right now? I mean, I know there's just like four or five e- songs on this EP, but and and, and I know these are like picking your favorite collective or child, but uh, are they yeah. any that stick out for you, Zach, at all? Yeah, I would say so, all for different reasons. I mean, I could go through each one and tell you what I was thinking about when I wrote it and what how long ago it was, where certain riffs came from. But I remember as soon as we wrote Sword from Stone, that was going to be something I really enjoyed. And I don't know why necessarily. I remember I... I, I texted Caitlin, our singer, and I said, hey, let's get together tomorrow, but I have nothing going on tonight. Give me a vibe. Give me, like, sad, happy, angry. Give me something to write to. Like, give me a word. And I was going to just try to write music to that. So she gave me, I think it was something like, it was, I can't remember, it was like uplifting or I got angry. Anyway, I ended up going in the opposite direction completely, on accident. I just started working on something, and it turned out being the complete opposite. And so she came over that next day. I don't even think she ever even heard the song. Uh, I didn't send her a quick, you know, demo take of anything. She came over and right away went to the chorus and she like hummed the chorus maybe the second time ever hearing it. And that's the chorus we actually went with like for good. So it was one of those songs that just everything dropped into place so effortlessly. It was almost felt weird. Like, oh, is that done? That took about that took just a handful of hours to do everything from lyrics to the music top to bottom. And it was almost like we were mailing it in, but it ended up turning out pretty good. So. That one's kind of my personal favorite, partially for that reason, but I don't know, just, I feel like when songs are effortless, that means something. How much growth musically have you seen this band go through up to the release of this EP, or has it just been more of a personal growth for each of you, Zach? Ooh, that's, I think from both, we all came from very different places. When this band formed, we were all in different places musically and uh, skill-wise. For example, Mike and I, we've been playing together since seventh grade. Pat joined us, I think, in high school. So, like, the three of us have been playing forever. Uh, the other guitar player is my actual brother. So he's the one who made he handed me a guitar saying, here, girls in middle school like boys that play guitar, so here, play guitar. I'm like, all right, sounds good. <laughs> so I started playing guitar, learned some Pink Floyd, learned some Metallica. And then Caitlin is just someone who always just, like, would sing. She actually sang on our high school band's garage recording that we did one time. We're like, wow, she's, she's good. Like, it's too bad she lives really far away. So she just 
she I don't think she ever had any training or anything like that. And we ran to her show and we're like, hey, do you want to try out for our new band? Sure. So she showed up, nailed it. So she kind of went from never being in a band to suddenly in a band that's playing all the time and you have obligations and it's kind of a mini business where a hand, the rest of us have been around music and have played in bands for years and, you know, over 10 years, decades. And with her, it was kind of, she was thrown in the fire really fast and watching her gr- gain ground on us so quickly was really kind of fun to watch and be a part of and push her along and try new things when we're demoing ideas. So I would say that's the good personal growth. And as a band, it's just, it's so much fun because we don't take ourselves too seriously. We like to goof around a lot. You know, we still have so much fun with it. So that's that's key for us. When we go on the road, we're always dicking around and horsing off. <laughs> that was going to be my next question about her is like, <laughs> you're talking about where she's not been in a band or anything, then she comes right into this full force. How mm-hmm. cool is that for her to adapt to this and just well out shit for you guys? Yeah, I mean, it's I'm almost jealous that that's what she got to do because, <laughs> I, I mean, it's just... I love that kind of excitement, like, oh, hey, do this now. I mean, I think it was our fourth or fifth show ever as a band. that, And we played in front of about 1,300 people in front of, like, you know, it was with Lacuna Coil, Sick Puppies. I mean, it was just a, a sold-out show at a, a premier local venue. I mean, it was like our fourth or fifth show. And it's like, oh, thanks for joining the band. Let's play a couple small shows. And then, oh, by the way, now we're going to play in front of, like, over 1,000 people. And, and don't mess up. You know, don't fuck up. So, <laughs> But she killed it. So it was just kind of those things where... It was fun to watch just here's the fire, throw her in it and just kind of see what happens. And she's yeah. delivered. So it's pretty cool. Do you do anything differently during the writing and recording process to maybe help keep your mind fresh and open to to not let the music get stale and go down a path that you, you don't like going down possibly? Do you do anything differently? Maybe one thing about all of us in the band. Also, we all listen to a lot of different types of music. So I'll go from listening to classical music, to Slayer, to Alt-J, to Foster the People, to Justin Bieber. I mean, anything. Sometimes I'll sit there and I'll go, okay, why is this song popular? And I'll dissect it and figure out, okay, it's because of this, this, and that. Or what I believe. This is what I find interesting about a song. Uh, It's because of that harmony right there on the third time through on a chorus. Or just I'll sit there and study and dissect popular music. And that kind of, I think I come at writing from a different angle. I try to put lots of little hooks in our songs that you probably necessarily wouldn't normally hear in rock. Sometimes I'm sure people had no idea they're there or they can even hear them. But yeah, I think just I always listen to different things. I'll listen to, like I say, more like contemporary music or top 40 music, and I'll pull ideas from that. I'm like, well, that would sound cool on electric guitar, so why I'm going to do that because I want to sell a million records type of thing. You know, That's the coolest thing that I've heard on here. And I, and I hear a lot, of, a lot of musicians talk about that, the style of music that they play. They don't even listen to that while they're trying to record mm-hmm. their albums or try to write music. They go the opposite route, and that that floors me, and it really baffles me. I'm like, well, how? How? Why does that even? It's yeah. just your off thing, and I know it's what you do. <laughs> if it works, it works. Yeah. Well, and it, yeah, and it's funny because you know, grow. I mean, when I was younger, I was a narrow-headed metal kid and rock kid. I mean, I still listen to the other stuff, but I wouldn't let everybody know about it. Like they don't, they can't know I listen to classical music. That's embarrassing. You know, girls don't like that. They want to know that I'm listening to. Backstreet Boys are in sync if I want to have a girlfriend, but in you know, but I'm the metal kid. I'm listening to Slayer, Metallica. My brother sending me home with CDs that my mom don't know, doesn't know about, so I can you know listen to Pantera and listen to Bad Words and rock out with my headphones on, <laughs> you know. And just then, the older you get, you start kind of going, you know what? I don't care what other people think. I'm gonna if I hear something on the radio, I'm like, oh, that made me tap my foot. That's stuck in my head now for the next six hours. I then want to figure out why is that stuck in my head, and then I'm gonna dissect it. And then if I listen to a song fifty times. If it's Justin Bieber, if it's Selena Gomez, I mean, it doesn't matter who it is. If I enjoy it, then I enjoy it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie and not be myself. So, what can fans expect at a show from Elephant Gun Ride who have not got to see you guys as of yet? Yeah, so I would go. The thing that people say the most to us, which cause I've never seen us play, so I've always been on stage, but people usually always say they're blown away by how tight we are as a band. All the breaks, all the stops, everything. They say we're incredibly tight and sound just almost like they're listening to the album, right. which I that to me is the biggest compliment you can have, you know, because we we play to a click, but there's very few things on 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 tracks. Sometimes a lot, I mean, a lot of time we don't even play track. We'll play venues. We'll be dipping through towns, and it's like okay, let's just free ball it and go. You know, we're playing Led Zeppelin, just playing, having fun. You know, and the fact that we can still have so much fun and play loose but still be so tight, that's great. And that comes from a lot of bands we play with. You know. 
the bands will come up to I'm like, my God, you guys are so tight. Like, I hope we can get that that tight someday. And it's just it's funny because I on stage, I'm hearing all the little things that I'm doing wrong. And <laughs> but yeah, and it's it's weird because, yeah, thinking about it, 100 over 100 shows, 105 shows something like that. I've never seen us. So I have no idea what we're like. We might be awful. People are just lying to us. So <laughs> now we're living in a digital era of recording albums and plus social media. With the digital recording of albums getting it out there a lot quicker, do you like this? And plus, for social media, you can reach out to more fans who have not got to hear you guys. Do you like this that we're in right now or no? I, I've i accepted it. I actually have fallen in love with it. I think you have to change with the times. You know, I remember back in the day when we first started playing music together in middle school, we, we, would, uh, we would record on a four-track recorder, write to tape, and it would be like the four songs we know. What we do is we go to school, we get requests from friends like, oh, yeah, no, I want, I want, a, I want a copy of your tape. Okay, cool. So we go to our, our drummer's house and we would play the three or four songs and then get done and grab another tape and then play them again. We didn't know how to duplicate them or anything like that. So we had to play every one of those tapes was 100% different. So it was like a by request. We're going to do it live to tape. It was awful. I mean, we play like Metallica. We play Metallica songs, but only like up to the first chorus and stop and we didn't have any vocals in them. And fast forward to now, it's you can distribute and get a quality recording in your basement and send it out to millions of people. I mean, you can type in, as long as you know the name, Elephant Gun Riot, just as easy as Metallica on Spotify. And right there, equally, you can get to our music just as fast. I think that's something that is amazing. I feel like it can, at times, give people more control about picking what they love, what they love to listen to. They're not necessarily being only shown the people that have a lot of money behind them and have a lot of backing. And I think that's where I enjoy the level we're at because we are in control of everything and we can do anything with distribution. We can release any time, any music we want at any time, anywhere we want. We can post anything we want on social media, any videos. Like We're in 100% control of what we do. And knowing that we are a few keystrokes away from reaching millions and billions of people, mm -hmm. I think that is amazing. It's super cool. And think about it, folks. I just saw, I think maybe today or yesterday, was the last day that Best Buy was selling physical yep. CDs. I mean, what the fuck? Look, I mean, this is crazy. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's crazy, you know, and it's, it's weird. Part of it, deep down inside, I'm like, that sucks, because I remember going with my dad with my allowance and buying, you know, this CD or this or that, you know, and getting excited for it, mowing the yard to go buy a, an album. Yeah. Limp Biscuit or whatever, you know, something that was super popular. And just now, you know, hop on Spotify. You know, the flip side is the pay on Spotify – People complain about that, you know, but I guess you can either complain about the pay, the pay on Spotify or just become obsolete completely, you know, like a dinosaur. So I guess you kind of got to pick your poison, what you enjoy and what you don't enjoy about, you know, the music business. What does Elephant Gun Riot bring to the table for music that's not out there as of right now, possibly? Ooh, that's a good question. I think because of the way I come at songwriting and maybe it's just in my own head, I feel like there's just something that we tweak just the right way with the the guitars, the melody of them, the way they work with the vocals, the honestness of the vocals and how it's just, uh, there's just, it's not overproduced in a lot of ways. So I feel like there's a lot of old rock and roll vibe in it, but with a lot of new modern sounds and tightness and quality. I feel like that's kind of the difference that we are in. It's people ask me, you know, what genre are you, what do you sound like? And I just have the hardest time. I usually have to pick five, six bands. Like this is what we sound like just to kind of, ex kind of explain what we are, you know, and it's, it's, it's fun. I love it. I love kind of introducing new people to it and watching their face kind of go, Oh, this is cool. That reminds me of that. And it's something that I never thought of. And I hear other people say it reminds me of that. And it's something way out in left field and just kind of taking all the feedback and watching people's faces kind of go, Oh, this is, this is cool. I like it. What is it? What made you want to become a musician? What was that spark for you, Zach, that said, yeah, that's, that's what I want to do right there, other than your brother handing you a guitar saying, yeah, girls like this? <laughs> I would say I remember the first time I played uh, some Pink or Metallica or Pink Floyd, one or the other, but just playing it and realizing that my hands and this instrument are making the same sounds that that person that I watch on TV or watch the music videos of that they do. And I can make the exact same sound with, you know, within reason on my hands in this instrument. And that to me was super cool. And once I could actually play a handful of chords and a couple of notes and kind of tie them together, I was like, I am making music, you know, and there's something different about it, you know, other than the xylophone class and, you know, elementary, 
that was just super exciting because I didn't have to follow the rules of the teacher. Okay, today we're going to play Mary Had a Little Lamb. It was, I'm going to play really half-assed the intro to Metallica's Master of Puppets. And it's going to sound like it. And I can play it for my friends. I'm like, dude, that's the Metallica song. That's so cool. <laughs> and I can play anything I want at any time. So that's what really got me excited. And then the thought of, I'm going to write something that no one's ever written before. It's going to be 100% original. And it's mine. And I'm going to make a, a music baby. And like that whole idea of creation, you know, something coming from so small. Like seeing something during the day, hearing something during the day that then turns into a whole song that then, you know, thousands and thousands of people are listening to or people are singing along to. That's what gets me excited about it. Got me going. Are there any show or moment that stands out for you being part of Elephant Gun Riot that, you know, that sticks out in your mind right now going, man, I can't believe that we're actually doing this right now? Yeah, I think um, I think it was probably that show, that, like the fourth or fifth show that we did with Caitlin where it's in front of our home crowd. At the time, the rest of us had been out of bands for a while, so we weren't like currently in the scene talking to a lot of people. And I just remember we got into the first song, you know, you, you know, bump, stops, and then just the roar of the crowd was just like, holy shit, like, they like it, I think. You know, it was like kind of the excitement of like, okay, well, let's, let's go to the next song, let's go. And then that song gets over, and they like it. And then we get done, and then we sell a bajillion, you know, shirts and CDs and everything. And it's like, oh, wow, like all this hard work and all these practices every week and this and that, like, was worth it because of this moment. And that was, that first show I'll always remember. And another show I always remember is going the total flip side the first time we played this little town called Wenatchee in Washington, we played this place called uh, Wally's House of Booze. I mean, it's tiny, holds maybe 60 people. And we walk in, we're like, okay, because at this point we're kind of getting used to playing, you know, bigger venues, bigger rooms. We walk in, we're like, okay, let's give it a shot. Our friends say it's cool. And it was one of the most fun shows we ever had. People are right in your face. They pay money and they stay there. And they're right in your face. They're singing and dancing. And it was just like, that's right. You can play a show in front of 60, 50 people and have more fun than in front of 1,000 or 1,500. And just those two shows on the spectrum, I always remember. That. So no matter the circumstances, you can have fun playing music. So I always remind myself of that. We lost an iconic musician last week, Vinny Paul, drummer of the Mighty Pantera, Hell Yell, Damage Plan, Rebel Meets Rebel. Yep. What? Anything you want to add on this, man? Because I see everybody else putting in there a two cents on this so uh would you like to say anything possibly oh yeah i mean it it sucks obviously and oh i remember i mean pantera for people who enjoy rock and metal is just one of the top bands one of the first bands you listen to or one of those bands that the first time you hear a song you go what the hell was that like i, I want to listen again like either you got to wait for the radio to play it again or you got to go buy buy the album or cd or tape or whatever and I just remember my brother made me a mix. It was called the Barney Mix. So my mom wouldn't listen to it because I'm going to listen to Barney music. I don't know. He called it that. And it was just all <laughs> Pantera. And it was just like my brother's version of like his favorite hits of Pantera. And it was just, I remember I'd listen to that. I'd take it to school, put it in the weight room in high school. As all of us lifting, we're all, we're all lifting the Pantera. Walk comes on. Like, yeah. So Terry gets, you know, just getting jacked for football. And, you know, I just, it's, it's crazy to think that at that moment, you don't think they're, you, you think they're invincible. Like that's a rock star. That yeah. is. That's the favorite. That's my favorite drummer in the world. That's the best drummer in the world. And then you fast forward, and you know life happens, and unfortunate things happen, and then they're gone, and then you're you're left with their memories that they, you know, that they wrote that you remember all through school, listening to and getting excited and driving your car fast to. And it was that drummer, that guy's lines that made you drive fast. It was that guy's lines that got you through that breakup because you were mad or whatever, you know. And it's just crazy to think that they're gone now, but you're left with their amazing music. So. Yeah, I can't believe he's gone either. That's that's the same thing I was thinking about. You know, like, you know, he's up in heaven or wherever they're at. Him and Dime rocking out and everything now. So, yeah, it's I I, I, st I still can't believe to sit here and put in the same sentence that Dime and Vinny are yeah. gone. At such a young age too. I yeah, mean, that's what. Yeah, he was fifty four, I think. Yeah, somewhere. Yeah, somewhere in the fifties. Super, super young. You know, and and Dime. I mean, he was my favorite guitar player at the time, and I was just. That was the first like celebrity death that I actually like was really hurt from and yeah. really took it to heart because at the time I was learning a bunch of Pantera and like learning solos and like, oh, that's how he does that run. Oh, he does that shape there. And I was kind of looking at his playing is I used a lot of his playing to step up my writing and my my love of playing. So I remember when that happened at that time, I was just I was floored. I was like, no, this isn't real. This is fake. It's not 
actually happening. They'll put out another Damage Plan album or get a Pantera reunion or something. And it's like, nope, that's it. You know, robbed of more great music. So, folks, Elephant Gun Riot, their EP is out right now. New EP, I should say. Sirens Call. You want to get out and check this out, pick this album up. Zach, how can folks stay in touch with you guys? Buy some merchandise, tour dates, tickets, you know, whenever you guys go out or information on you all. How can he do that? Yeah, absolutely. So basically, I whatever you use, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, any of those things, Google us, Elephant Gun Riot, everything will pop up for you. YouTube, uh, we got a merch store online that we keep updated with everything. Uh, yeah, I mean, Google us, you'll find everything you need to know with dates, everything, shows. Before I let you go, good sir, would you care to a promo for the show? (laughs) Cool. Hey, this is Zach Werchak from Elephant Gun Riot, and you are listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Everybody stick around. we got some great, great music coming up, and you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour and Bod's Mayhem Radio Network. Thank you so, so much, Zach. Yeah, thank you for having me, man.